The work week is getting underway here at the offices of tech startup Zendev. Coders are busy at their desks, managers are discussing new accounts in the conference room, and workers are sneaking breaks in the video game lounge. These are all scenes that would not be out of place in Silicon Valley or London's tech city. But Zendev is located in the city of Mostar, in southern Bosnia and Herzegovina, a country still struggling to move past its bloody ethnic war in the 1990s. Sanad Shantic started Zendev six years ago when he returned to Bosnia. He grew up as a war refugee in Sweden, studied IT in undergrad, and then spent a year at a tech firm in San Francisco, where, he says, he got the startup bug. So in 2016, I contacted my friend Nikola Mirkovic to start uh, the company that we're running today, Zendev, which is an IT consultancy company focused on uh, delivering software as a service solutions. Six years later, Zendev now has a two-sided business model, an external consulting division and in-house product development. The company employs 70 people, with offices in Bosnia's capital, Sarajevo, and here in Shantich's hometown of Mostar. Mostar is known as a bustling tourist destination and UNESCO World Heritage Site. But the city was badly damaged in Bosnia's civil war. Conflict erupted in 1992 between Bosnia's three main ethnic groups, Muslim Bosniaks, Catholic Croats, and Orthodox Serbs, culminating in a genocide. 100,000 people died, 80% of whom were Muslim Bosniaks. Mostar's famous centuries-old bridge was destroyed and had to be rebuilt. Many buildings in the city center, which can be seen from the balcony of Zendev's trendy workspace, still show the scars of conflict. Just like this. Shantich says the country is stuck in the past mentally as well. Ethnic divisions continue to complicate life in Bosnia, driving people to leave. 34% of Bosnians now live outside the country, making it the nation with the second largest percentage of its population living in the diaspora. The general problem that is the most acute problem right now, and it's been an ongoing discussion since I moved back here, is the mass immigration that's happening in the country right now. Bosnia suffers from one of the worst so-called brain drain problems in the world. Most of Bosnia's young people are fleeing in search of jobs abroad that just don't exist at home. And so, when Shantich co-founded Zendev, his mission was twofold, to boost the tech industry in his country and to create jobs that would keep young people from leaving Bosnia. According to the United Nations Population Fund, if emigration continues at the current rate, the country's population will have in just 50 years. You give a lot of time, and like invest your time in getting a master's degree or a doctoral degree or even a bachelor's degree and after that you cannot find any work in your area of expertise, of course you're frustrated and you want to leave. Jelko Vukšafezic and Irhana Chadin are members of Grupa 9, an organization of new generation politicians who are advocating for more youth-focused governmental policies. Growing up in Bosnia, They've lived with the issues causing brain drain and have become experts on the topic. They explain that the problem is not just a lack of jobs, but a question of corruption and nepotism. When the war ended in 1995, the Dayton Peace Accords divided the country into two ethnically defined entities. Even 30 years later, nearly every political party in Bosnia remains aligned with a specific ethnic group. And jobs, particularly in the public sector, are allocated according to ethnicity. This is discouraging for young people in Bosnia who do not want to be a part of that story and cannot identify with it all. All they want is an equal status so they can apply for a job and get it. But this is not the case. Even in, in privately owned companies, you have certain soft quotas or unspoken rules. Many people hope they will have better luck finding work abroad. Most days, you can find a small crowd gathering outside the German embassy in the capital. They are hoping to get work visas, but their motivations for leaving vary. 25-year-old Benjamin has struggled to find a job in Bosnia, despite being a qualified physiotherapist. In our city, and country as well, there aren't many opportunities for employment or development, and you need to pay someone to get a job. Diana, who is 25, is going to join her husband, 
who already has his German work visa. I know that my children will have a better future there than they would here. And 32-year-old Adis moved to Germany seven years ago and is here to obtain paperwork for the child he and his wife recently adopted. My wife and I are naturally hardworking people. We have done many things, even agriculture. We tried many things in order to stay in the country and support our family, but there were no options. Like the others, software developer Tarek Stupitz was about ready to pack his bags. Because of the entire situation in the country, when I finished my studies, I was thinking of moving out, you know, going abroad. But then he heard about Sanad Shantich's company, Zendev, and now his story has a better ending. I wanted to actually work here, you know, this was my number one spot to work at. He was offered a job with the company and has been working there for over a year. Stupitz and his co-workers know that Zendev has offered them a rare opportunity to live well in their own country. With very good salaries and very good working conditions like here, so we do not have to leave for Germany, Switzerland, or anywhere west. There's no standard like bus, you know, employee communication. We just have this culture of open feedback. I say if we want people to stay, it's not upon selling these, uh, this youth the idea of patriotism and why they should stay. Let's build a, uh, a place with better, better living conditions here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And there's another key facet to Shantich's plan. At Zendev, he's trying to foster an ethnically blind workplace. This can be seen in the location of Zendev's Mostar office, which sits on the unofficial border between two ethnic neighborhoods. The invisible line that we talk about in Mostar is basically what was left as far as how, when the war ended. So uh, what part of the city did the Croats have under control versus the Bosniaks? And it's basically along this line. Shantich says that unlike other employers in the country, Zendev hires based on skill. Even though uh, we never focused on uh, uh, hiring by nationality, it ended up that in our company it's almost 50-50 amongst the different ethnicities in Mostar. Zendev offers team building activities, like weekly late night volleyball, that brings his young employees together in a city where most activities are still segregated along ethnic lines. This approach seems to resonate. Job applications keep coming in, and Zendev's management is rushing to keep up with recruitment. What's the first, second, and third reason uh, people are talking about when they uh, figure out that they, that they want to work with us on the scale? Culture, benefits, projects. Now, obviously, we can create our own bubble in Zendev and the, the lifestyle that we live within that, but if the problems are on a national level, and they are on a national level, uh, we need to start thinking bigger. It's a message he's trying to spread, including on Grupa 9's online video talk show, which interviews political experts and entrepreneurs battling segregation, building businesses, and striving for stability in Bosnia. What Bosnia needs, Shantic says, is more high-skilled jobs that pay people what they are worth, more companies breaking down segregation in the country, and more collaboration with the diaspora. The stakes may well be high. In October, the European Union announced it was finally considering Bosnia's bid to join the economic and political bloc, six years after Bosnia had submitted its request to join. Membership could boost the Bosnian economy and perhaps push the government to address the lingering corruption and dysfunction in state institutions. It is clear that young people want to stay here but it is up to us to create better opportunities for these young people so they can. Through Sanad's example, we have shown that this is possible and that we need to continue to work on this effort.